Realistic medicine is about providing the healthcare that people really value. When people seek help and advice from healthcare professionals, they're often worried or anxious. From symptoms to tests and investigations, to diagnosis and treatment, it's a lot to take in. Most people want to be more involved in decisions about their care, but this doesn't always happen. Realistic medicine is about getting the right care at the right time. One of the ways we can do this is to make sure we keep people at the centre of their care and listen to what matters to them. Practising the six pillars of realistic medicine will help us achieve this. These are building a personalised approach to care, shared decision making, reduce harm and waste, managing risk better, tackle unwarranted variation and become improvers and innovators. To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. How can we shift our focus from what's the matter to what matters to you? Getting to know people, patients and their families can help us to understand what really matters so we can do the right thing for each person. Making meaningful connections and building relationships are key to good experiences and better outcomes. Even though we might feel this is challenging, Keeping a focus on what really matters improves staff experience too. Understanding a person's values, beliefs and priorities in life, as well as their strengths and knowledge, is just as important as understanding their diagnosis. The what matters to you approach builds trust, which in turn creates better experiences and better healthcare outcomes for people. It helps us to understand what people really need, rather than what we think they need. Investing a little time to understand what matters usually results in less work overall. This means we need to be intentional about creating space to listen. If we do not make space to listen and understand what matters, we risk going down a path that is wasteful, adds no value and potentially even causes harm. How can you build listening opportunities into your daily work to make sure that we always invest the time to understand what really matters for every person? To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. What can you do in your everyday practice to ensure people are equal partners in making decisions about their treatment and care as much as they want to be. Shared decision-making describes an approach to healthcare conversations that recognises there are two experts in the room and supports people to make informed choices about their own care and treatment. Evidence suggests that professionals interrupt people within 20 seconds of speaking and only 5% of their time is spent answering questions. So, how do we prepare for these conversations? Firstly, understanding of the situation and what really matters to the person and active listening is key to this. Secondly, information sharing, including the benefits, risks, alternatives or doing nothing in relation to all treatment options available. BRAN for short. Benefits of this treatment or intervention, risks, balancing any downsides there may be. Alternatives, weighing up other options and preferences. Nothing, as sometimes taking no action is the best option. And finally, involved and empowered. Decisions should be made by the person, together with the professional, working in equal partnership. To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. Variation exists in the way healthcare is provided across Scotland, and sometimes this variation is justified in order to meet the healthcare needs of local populations. But it is important to make sure that healthcare is delivered fairly and equitably for everyone, 
no matter where they live or who they are. When this doesn't happen, we call this unwarranted variation. Unwarranted variation is often linked to inequity of access to services. Where unwarranted variation exists, patients can be subjected to more tests, longer waits, or more difficult journeys to get the care they need. If we can reduce unwarranted variation, it frees up valuable resources that can improve patient outcomes for everyone. Public Health Scotland has developed the Scottish Atlas of Healthcare Variation. The Atlas shows variation in the healthcare provision across Scotland and can help us identify unwarranted variation by helping us decide what the right level of service provision is for the people we care for. The Atlas does not tell us if high levels of provision is good or if low levels are bad. It is simply a tool that aims to help us identify the over-provision or under-provision of healthcare services. There are also sources of local data that can help us understand our system in more detail. For example, care opinion provides patient stories, while complaints tell us what isn't working. We also need to look at the data from the services we provide. Analyzing all of these information sources together helps us focus our improvement work where it will have the most impact. Removing unwarranted variation helps us to focus our efforts and helps to make sure that we're doing what we need to reduce waste and potential harm and improve the services we deliver. This will also help people get the best outcomes possible, no matter who they are or where they live. Keeping our care consistent makes patient journeys easier, fairer and can help save our NHS resources. To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. As well as delivering more person-centred care through shared decision-making, we also need to work to reduce harm and waste. Harm and waste are two common things that show a healthcare system isn't working as well as it could. All healthcare investigations and treatments carry some degree of risk of potential harm. Harm can be defined as unintended or negative impacts resulting from healthcare or failure to give the right care. Waste in healthcare can be defined as not using our resources as effectively as we can. And this includes failing to get things right the first time or is caused by providing care where the evidence suggests is of little or no value. Healthcare is a precious resource and includes things like medication, equipment and buildings, as well as healthcare professionals' skills and experience. It is important that we make the most of what we have available. For example, overusing investigations can be harmful to patients and can be wasteful as these resources should benefit people who need our help the most. Finding and then eliminating harm and waste helps us make the best use of our precious healthcare resources and provide better value for the people we care for. There are many different types of waste. Examples include over-treatment, requesting too many tests, investigations, and making referrals just in case. Poor coordination of care. When this is coordinated around patients' needs, we can often reduce unnecessary delays or poor utilisation of people and their skills. Can you think of any waste or potential harm where you work? To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. Your attitude to risk is shaped by a number of things, from your values, beliefs and priorities, to your unique personal circumstances and context. When making decisions about treatment or care, each of us needs to weigh up the advantages and disadvantages of each option. And these may differ from person to person, depending on what matters to them. Shared decision-making, recognising there are two experts in the room, the person receiving care and the professional can help get this right. By having meaningful conversations about the risks and benefits of someone's treatment options, we can help them make an informed choice. Some things you may want to consider are, is communication and understanding clear enough to make an informed decision? 
Are you focusing on what matters to the person? Would doing nothing actually be the best option? Have we documented our decisions so others can see and follow our plan? Think about what managing risk means for you. Patients should be supported in deciding which risks they do and do not want to take. Listening carefully to what really matters to someone will help them to make the best decision, whether that's doing more, doing less, or doing nothing. To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot. Realistic Medicine supports the creation of a culture of innovation and improvement. Taking time to do this provides a springboard for action and builds a strong foundation to help us make the changes that need to happen. Successful improvement and innovation start with listening, really listening. When we discover what matters most to people and see our work from different perspectives, it can help us generate the fresh ideas needed to take us in new directions. Listening in new and different ways leads to a deeper understanding of our work, which then helps us to accelerate our improvement efforts. But new ideas need to be tested in the real world. Doing this can be a bit daunting and sometimes challenging. So it's important to develop the skills and knowledge required to make lasting improvements. These include making sure you involve others. Doing improvement is a team sport. Using techniques designed to support rapid cycles of testing so we can tell quickly if our ideas really work. Developing a systematic approach to scaling up and spreading changes where relevant. Making sure the improvement reaches everyone who can benefit from it as well as knowing what changes we need to make, we also need to know how to make change happen. How can you become an innovator and improver in your daily work? Listen, understand, improve. To find out more, visit realisticmedicine.scot.